Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving into a topic that impacts us all at some point. Inflammation. What exactly causes it? Why does it happen? And what can we do about it? Stick around to find out all about this essential, yet often misunderstood, bodily response. What is inflammation? First off, let's understand what inflammation is. Inflammation is your body's natural response to injury, infection, or harmful stimuli. It's part of your immune system's attempt to heal itself and protect against further damage. There are two types of inflammation, acute and chronic. Acute inflammation is the immediate, short-term response to injury or infection. Think of a cut, a sprained ankle, or a sore throat. The body's response is swift and intense, aimed at quickly resolving the problem and beginning the healing process. This type of inflammation is characterized by redness, heat, swelling, and pain at the site of injury. Chronic inflammation, on the other hand, is a slower, long-term response that can last for months or even years. This can be seen in conditions like rheumatoid arthritis or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. Unlike acute inflammation, chronic inflammation often persists without the immediate threat of injury or infection, and it can lead to ongoing tissue damage. The Mechanism of Inflammation So, how does inflammation work? When your body detects something harmful, it triggers an inflammatory response. Here's a simplified breakdown of the process. Detection Immune cells recognize a threat, such as pathogens, damaged cells, or irritants. This detection is often mediated by pattern recognition receptors, PRRs, on the surface of immune cells, which identify common features of pathogens and damaged cells. Signal transmission. These cells release signaling molecules called cytokines and chemokines to communicate with other immune cells. Cytokines such as interleukins and tumor necrosis factor, TNF, play a key role in amplifying the inflammatory response, while chemokines attract immune cells to the site of inflammation. Response activation. Blood flow increases to the affected area, bringing more immune cells and nutrients. This is facilitated by the dilation of blood vessels, which also causes the characteristic redness and warmth of inflamed tissue. Elimination. Immune cells, such as neutrophils and macrophages, work to eliminate the harmful agents. Neutrophils are among the first responders, engulfing and destroying pathogens, while macrophages help to clear debris and dead cells. Resolution. Once the threat is neutralized, anti-inflammatory signals help to wind down the response and begin healing. Specialized pro-resolving mediators, SPMs, play a critical role in resolving inflammation and promoting tissue repair. Before we continue, remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Causes of Inflammation Now, let's get into what causes inflammation. There are several triggers, and they can be broadly categorized into Infections Bacteria viruses, fungi, and parasites can all cause infections, prompting an inflammatory response. For example, the flu virus can cause widespread inflammation in the body, leading to symptoms such as fever, muscle aches, and fatigue. Physical injuries. Any physical trauma like cuts, bruises, burns, or fractures will trigger inflammation as part of the healing process. When you cut yourself, for instance, immune cells rush to the site to prevent infection and initiate tissue repair. Toxins and irritants. Exposure to harmful chemicals, pollutants, or allergens can cause inflammation. For instance, inhaling cigarette smoke can inflame the lungs, leading to chronic conditions like chronic bronchitis or emphysema. Autoimmune reactions. Sometimes the immune system mistakenly attacks the body's own tissues, causing autoimmune diseases like lupus or multiple sclerosis, which are characterized by chronic inflammation. In rheumatoid arthritis, for example, the immune system targets the joints, causing pain and swelling. Chronic conditions. Conditions like obesity, heart disease, and diabetes are often associated with chronic low-grade inflammation. Adipose tissue in obesity, for instance, can release inflammatory cytokines that contribute to insulin resistance and cardiovascular disease. Risk factors and contributing factors. Certain factors can increase the likelihood of developing chronic inflammation. Genetics. Family history of autoimmune diseases or inflammatory conditions can increase risk. Genetic predisposition can influence how your immune system responds to potential threats. Diet. Diets high in processed foods, sugar, and trans fats can promote inflammation. On the other hand, 
Diets rich in antioxidants and omega-3 fatty acids can have anti-inflammatory effects. Lifestyle. Lack of exercise, poor sleep, and high stress levels are known contributors. Regular physical activity, adequate sleep, and stress management techniques can help modulate inflammation. Environmental factors. Continuous exposure to pollutants or toxins can trigger inflammation. For example, air pollution can exacerbate respiratory conditions like asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. Symptoms of inflammation. The classic signs of acute inflammation are easy to recognize and remember with the acronym PRISH. Pain. The inflamed area is often painful due to the release of chemicals that stimulate nerve endings. Redness. Increased blood flow causes redness, which is a hallmark of inflammation. Immobility. There may be a loss of function in the affected area, either due to pain or swelling. Swelling. Accumulation of fluid causes swelling as immune cells and nutrients flood the site of injury. Heat. The inflamed area may feel warm due to increased blood flow. Chronic inflammation, however, can be more insidious and might not have such obvious symptoms. It can cause fatigue, joint pain, digestive issues, and even mental health disturbances like depression or anxiety. Unlike acute inflammation, the symptoms of chronic inflammation can be subtle and develop slowly over time, making it harder to detect. The role of inflammation in disease. Chronic inflammation is linked to a host of diseases. Here are a few examples. Heart disease. Inflammation can lead to the buildup of plaques in arteries, increasing the risk of heart attacks and strokes. This process, known as atherosclerosis, involves the accumulation of fatty deposits and inflammatory cells within the arterial walls. Diabetes. Inflammatory signals can interfere with insulin signaling, contributing to insulin resistance. Chronic inflammation in adipose tissue, liver, and muscle can impair glucose metabolism, leading to type 2 diabetes. Cancer. Chronic inflammation can damage DNA and lead to uncontrolled cell growth, which increases cancer risk. Conditions like chronic hepatitis and inflammatory bowel disease, IBD, are associated with higher rates of liver and colon cancer, respectively. Alzheimer's disease. Inflammation in the brain is believed to play a role in the development of neurodegenerative diseases. Chronic activation of immune cells in the brain, known as microglia, can contribute to neuronal damage and the progression of Alzheimer's disease. Managing and reducing inflammation. While inflammation is a natural and necessary process, managing it is crucial, especially when it becomes chronic. Here are some strategies to reduce and manage inflammation. Diet. Eat an anti-inflammatory diet rich in fruits, vegetables, nuts, fatty fish, and whole grains. Avoid processed foods, sugar, and trans fats. Foods like berries, leafy greens, and fatty fish are known for their anti-inflammatory properties. Exercise. Regular physical activity helps to reduce inflammation and boost overall health. Exercise can help regulate immune function and reduce inflammatory markers in the body. Sleep. Ensure you get enough high-quality sleep, as poor sleep can exacerbate inflammation. Aim for 7-9 hours of sleep per night to support optimal immune function and reduce stress. Stress management. Practice stress-reducing techniques like meditation, yoga, or deep breathing exercises. Chronic stress can elevate levels of cortisol and other stress hormones that promote inflammation. Avoid toxins. Minimize exposure to environmental toxins and quit smoking if you do. Reducing exposure to air pollution, harmful chemicals, and secondhand smoke can help lower the risk of inflammation-related diseases. Medications and supplements. Sometimes, anti-inflammatory medications or supplements like omega-3 fatty acids, curcumin, and vitamin D might be recommended by a healthcare provider. Nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs, and corticosteroids can also be used to manage acute inflammation. Inflammation is a complex and crucial aspect of our immune system. While acute inflammation is a protective response, chronic inflammation can lead to various health problems. Understanding what causes inflammation and how to manage it through lifestyle changes and medical interventions is essential for maintaining long-term health. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more health insights. Hit the bell icon so you don't miss our next video. Thanks for watching, and stay healthy. Remember, always consult with a healthcare professional before making any significant changes to your diet or lifestyle, especially if you have a pre-existing condition.
Until next time, take care.